He's a, and uh, he's just going to be hanging out, and so he'll join us, and we'll get into all those things, Titans related, everything with Steve Lehman coming up uh, at 3 o'clock to begin the second hour. We talked about the Predators yesterday and the story that got out on Sportsnet uh, became kind of a national story. It did. Which is interesting. It did. That the team set out on this road trip. They're out all week. They're going to finish things up in the state of California and then come on back home next week. But this whole road trip started in St. Louis on Saturday, a 4 o'clock game. And then typically when you're on the road and mm-hmm. you continue on, mm-hmm. especially in the first leg yeah. of a week-long and after road a win. trip, yeah. and after a win, yeah. you keep moving on, right? You just you stay on the road and you move on, go on to the next destination. Well, yeah. the next destination was not Winnipeg. <laughs> the next destination was not Calgary. No. The next destination wasn't... You know, well, they place. weren't going. They weren't going to stay in St. Louis. I don't. I don't want to because it's. Kind of, I'm not trying said, to. Don't don't start. You know. I know. Dunking on places. Well, that, it's you know. just not Vegas. Okay? No, no. It wasn't Columbus, Ohio. It wasn't Columbus. There's nothing wrong with Columbus. God bless you, Columbus. It's not. It's not comparable to Vegas. It's not. And the players uh, already had plans in Vegas to go mm-hmm. to the U2 concert uh, at the Sphere. We had a great conversation with Adam Hill. Yesterday, he talked yeah. about interesting problem there. Sephir, yeah. uh, you know, it has become a phenomenon, but yeah. it seems like right now it's only there. I guess the residency is the best way or yeah. the only way right now. Yeah. Because you can't just come in there and do like a one off because yeah. it's so high tech. It's so different. It's so different than yeah. anything on your tour. Yeah. You'd have to change everything. You just can't go from Bridgestone Arena and do the same show you were doing at Bridgestone. Correct. In the sphere. Now you well, could go no. to T Mobile, which is the home of Vegas. Yeah. Golden Knights. Maybe. You could go from Bridgestone oh, yeah, 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 to yeah. T Mobile. Yeah, to that arena. Yes. And do your your same exact do, show yeah. there. Take your but stage you, show and do it on the You can't go to the sphere. So anyway, obviously we know about last Thursdays we talked about it. On Friday show, the stinker against the Dallas Stars. Worst home loss in the history of the franchise. They got housed. Yeah. 9-2, never was a game. Well, Barry Trotz and Andrew Burnett, I suspect more of this was about Barry Trotz. Because I told you, I told the story yesterday. Barry Trotz told me the the story once when he was the, the head coach of the Capitals and Ovechkin was late for a practice or late for a meeting and he benched Ovechkin. And they were like, what are you doing? And nobody could believe it. Uh, You know, the higher-ups in the organization, like, what are you doing? He's our star. Why are you benching him for tonight's game? Barry's like, I got to send a message to him. It's not okay. Mm -hmm. I got to send a message to this team. It's not okay. And they got walloped in that game. And it did not go over well up above Barry Trotz. Well, they went on to win the Stanley Cup. And Barry Trotz told me that he felt like that was a very instrumental play on his part. And look, a gutsy play. It was. Right? Yeah. Because as we talked about yesterday, those moves are gutsy. They're not not no-brainers. No. They're 50-50. It can go great or it can go poorly. Right? You can lose the room. Very quickly. And that is, and when you lose the room, it's over for the coach. Mm -hmm. It is over which, by the way, will probably lead us into our Vanderbilt discussion coming up here soon with Chris Lee because there are people out there that believe Jerry Stackhouse has lost this team. We can ask Chris Lee if he believes that because if so, again, it's over for the head coach. Obviously, it worked out in Barry Trotz, and you know, he felt like it was instrumental in changing the culture in that room and changing the mentality in that room because they're like going, if he can do that to Ovechkin, and I'm a third line winger. Well, I better, you know, I better make sure I'm on time. <laughs> because not only will he yeah. punish me, he may just send me down or he may just cut me. Yeah. I may be out of a job. Yeah, and I don't need that right now. So I believe this is probably more Barry Trotz because of his experience, 25 years of being a head coach in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Andrew Burnett really doesn't have much time no. as a head coach. No. Very little time. One full as a head season. Yeah. I was gonna say. Well, yeah. Well, it wasn't, wasn't even a even full, a full season. season, yeah. I'm saying if you're combining this yeah. and that, yeah. Well, he's, he's got, got none, basically. He's got over a full to season. Compared Barry Trotz and company, yeah. But, yeah, with one organization, none yeah. have one full yeah. season under his belt. So, I think this is probably more Barry Trotz-driven 
And with all that being said, it worked. It did. Because they went into St. Louis and they played hard and they beat the Blues and they went in last night to Vegas and they looked good. Mm -hmm. They did. And Vegas is good, as we know. As we talked with Adam Hill yesterday, Golden Knights are going to be, you know, one of the teams to beat in the Western Conference yet again. Mm. And they went in there and they played inspired hockey and they won. They looked fast. They did. Um, last night, uh, quick hands all over the place. Um, great game by Lankinen. Um, you know, really yes. played well. Played the backup. Um, played the backup role and went in there and played really, really well for the most part. Uh, had a couple of key saves down the stretch, back to back, uh, you know, on their end of the ice that really could have got, you know, let Vegas back in the game. Uh, he had given up a couple of things there, but he didn't. He stuck in there, and uh, and the Preds played a lot of, uh, you know, played a played good hockey. They did. They played good hockey. Put a lot of shots on goal, and it worked out for them because uh, some of the uh, obstructive views they were able to get there. Uh, I can't remember which which goal it was, but there was one goal in particular where the Vegas there's no way the Vegas goalie ever saw the puck at all. Yeah, yeah. He never saw it, and his own guy was in the way. Yeah, and he I just never and he about. just never saw it. Um, and but that's because of the aggressive play by the Predators. It wasn't just because the guy was clumsy and just happened to to flash across the vision of the goalie. You know, it was it was intentional. They were playing very aggressive in the zone and were able to get the shots on goal that they needed in order to to pile up the points. Unusual now, and, and Darren, when's the last time we've said this? And I guess we did say this during one of their winning streaks. But the Preds have now scored five goals in back-to-back -back games, which is kind of what you need to do in this NHL to win. And they've done it. So, you know, that that, that is fantastic in and of itself. Not just to get the wins, but to get five goals and a W um, on the road here. Uh, I think it bodes well for the team. And if Lankinen can be that guy... Then you know it does making it does make trading UC Soros a lot easier. If he can turn in more games like what we saw last night, now can he keep it up? Can he keep doing that night after night after night after? That's the real challenge. You know, Alex Doherty joined us a lot last year and a little bit this year. Uh, been covering the Preds, penalty box radio. He just made uh, a major announcement. We'll have to get him on here soon. He just put this out there on Twitter. Okay, uh, a couple hours ago, he is going to be taking over the Preds beat. On uh, for the Tennessean. Congratulations, sir. So well deserved by Alex Doherty. Mm -hmm. So good for him. Uh, they're going to get fantastic coverage at the Tennessean with Alex Doherty covering them on a daily basis. 615-844-5600 is the phone line and the text line. Let's go to Bob in Antioch, who has been a major stranger to our show. And that doesn't mean stranger danger. It just means Bob. We miss you, in Bob. Bob, what's up? I miss Miss you guys. Just think, you know, taking care of things at Antioch. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Are you running for office? Are you the mayor? No. Okay. No. I was. I was at the uh, the nine to two loss uh, mm. last week. God bless I, you, sir. I've never, that's the worst I've ever seen them play. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Trotz and Burnett did what they did. And my question is, do you think that some of the players who uh, towards whom uh, so that was directed uh, will will be moved at the uh, at the trade deadline because I know it's two games to two games, but uh, I, I was curious about what your uh, your thoughts are uh, about that. And if so, uh, who do you think uh, might be among those players? Well, uh, tick tock tick tock on the trade deadline, right? I suspect one it's young players. Um, I, I think it's it's pretty much out there that it's more it's players on the younger side beginning of their careers that just don't get it yet, right? And, you know, the, the guys like Ryan McDonough and Ryan O'Reilly and Roman Yossi and Philip Forsberg and those cats, Colton Sissons, those dudes that have been around the block for a long time, you know, they may be excited to go see U2 at Sphere, but they are not openly talking about it enough to get their coach's attention for him to blast them in a post-game press conference. My guess is it's young guys that don't know any better, and they're just doing what they do, and they're not thinking about that stuff, and they're openly talking about it, and how excited they are to go to Vegas, and da 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 da, and then they go out there and they get embarrassed, which then prompts their coach to embarrass them in a post game press conference. So, do I think it's enough to get them moved? No, but I, I'll say this: 
I do have concerns that it takes a move by Barry Trotz, a jolt like this, to get people to vote. You're a professional athlete. You're getting paid. This is what it takes at this level. You're at the highest level in the world playing hockey. And if you have to be motivated like this, I question what is your motivation long term. If you have to get jolts and you have to have a kick in the butt every once in a while to refocus you, why are you playing hard now? Oh, you didn't need to play hard before this happened, before you got embarrassed, before you had uh, this get out publicly. Look, I suspect the Predators wanted this to get out publicly, to embarrass them. Hmm. And if you have to do that, Bob. That would be unlike them, though, Darren. It, it would be, but I'm just telling you, it wouldn't okay. surprise me. that uh, Because, look, they're also sending a message to the fans, like this is unacceptable. The fans are ticked. Bob, I'm sure that's probably one of the maddest times you've ever left Bridgestone Arena in all the games you've all been right. to over the years. Yes, I yeah, I, I agree. It, it was. And there have been other games this year where, uh, you know, not as flagrant as 9-2, to two, but there have been some others where they, you know, they play, played big eggs and whatnot. And don't you think that uh, the problem has uh, been, has existed uh, several months or at least weeks, uh, you know, before this. So that's obviously not the only, maybe came to a head then, but it, it has to have been uh, rearing its head uh, previously, don't you think? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. No that's doubt. Fair. Which is why, look, this is great. I'm glad they've won two games in a row. They're back in the thick of things. But it has not changed my stance whatsoever. They may have an unbelievable road trip, by the way. It's set up. Now, LA's coming up Thursday. That's going to be tough. And after that, San Jose and Anaheim are garbage. Those are very winnable games. This may be a very, very successful road trip, but it doesn't change my mind on what they should do at the deadline. Say, Bob, are you fine moving on from UC Soros at this point? With an attractive offer. With an attractive offer. I'm not saying you cut him. I'm just saying, you know, sell cheap. If if they could could make a big, you know, haul like an offer I can't refuse, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't be against it. What about an average haul? You know, just... No. No, you want a big one. I, I, okay. I, I think they should. I think they should at least get a uh, an offensive player who is is currently, mm. uh, you know, d- doing well along with a uh, a number one draft pick. Now I'm not saying, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm saying somebody a close, not not equal to, but maybe a, a young player close to uh, the level of somebody who could be. Uh, Close to another Forsberg in the long haul. Yep. Wow. All right. Trade for that young guy. We'll see. Trade for the young guy who's high up in the pipeline. Real quick, Bob, we got to head to the break. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. I was going to let him. I was going to let him go real quick. All right. uh, Bob was very polite. No, he was. He's always polite. (laughs) Yeah. Bob, don't be a stranger. Please, Bob. Okay. We like your conversations. All right. We'll take a break. Come back. Chris Lee, VandySports.com. We'll find out what is going on the Vanderbilt Basketball Program, and we'll do that next here on the McFarland Show, WNSR. Oh, beautiful gold rush with your sparkling top prize. You surely are a sight for sore eyes. And jackpot slots with your chance of $75,000 winners. Oh, how I'd take you for a candlelight dinner. Uh, sounds like people are really loving the new February Instant Game from the Tennessee Lottery. Play today for your chance to win up to $5 million, only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing fun. Please play responsibly. Cashback is not available on gas in New Jersey and Wisconsin. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using Upside, the free app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the Upside app? Yes, I get real cash back just for buying the gas I was going to buy anyway. But is it a hassle to use? No, it's super fast and easy and i can cash out whenever i want that's a total no-brainer i'm downloading the free upside app now 
Download the free Upside app now to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code LIFT for an extra 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's promo code LIFT. You can cash out anytime right to your bank account, to PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code LIFT for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code LIFT. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzy. Rizzy Kism of Rizza, a prescription only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy. With Sky Rizzy, three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzy is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Don't use if allergic to Sky Rizzy. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Before treatment, your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms such as fever, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or cough, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Thanks to Sky Rizzy, there's nothing on my skin, and that means everything. your doctor today about Sky Rizzy, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. And visit SkyRizzy.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZY to learn more. You enjoy the thrill of gambling, but what happens when it becomes a problem? Whether you want to cut back or quit gambling altogether, the Gambling Clinic has been helping people change their gambling for over two decades. We're here to help, not to judge. The Gambling Clinic is a Tennessee-based clinic offering in-person and telehealth support to help people win back their life. Visit us at thegamblingclinic.com. This project is funded by the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. Are you ready for some March Madness? Then don't miss out on any of the action at the High Valley Conference Basketball Championship presented by United Fidelity as the return of the Ford Center downtown Evansville for March 6th through the 9th as the first entries into the men's and women's NCAA basketball tournaments are crowned. All session tickets and single game tickets are now on sale to each OVC school's ticket office, Ticketmaster, and the Ford Center box office. Visit ovcsports.com forward slash Evansville for more details and be there to OVC it in person. Welcome back to the Strike and Spare Studios. You're listening to The McFarland Show with Darren McFarland and Fox 17's Justin McFarland. That is true. Rolling along on this Wednesday afternoon, 615-844-5600 is the phone line and the text line. Darren and Justin, we are The McFarlands, and we're live in the Strike and Spare Family Fun Center studio. Adam Johnson is in today for DJ Damon, who has the day off. Let's... Talk to Chris Lee. Does a great job covering Vanderbilt Athletics, vandysports.com. He's at Chris Lee 70 on Twitter or X, whatever the heck you call it these days. Chris, how we doing? Hey, good afternoon, Darren. I hope you're well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me start with some things. I'm just going to try to hit you with some questions. We've been batting around the show, and you're much more equipped to answer them than us. So let's just start with, some tough ones, and I know some of these just made the, I'm just asking you your opinion because you're around the program. We had Vince Ferrara come on with us on Monday, and he comes on every Monday from Knoxville. He's on 99.1 The Sports Animal there, and he does a lot of stuff for the Vol Network, including being at all the basketball games, being around the players, getting interviews. He was there basically courtside on Saturday for the Vandy Tennessee game, and I asked him on Monday just what were his thoughts seeing Vanderbilt up close and Vince is a very fair guy he's a glasses half full type of guy he is not hey let's you know mushroom the place and you know he tries to be fair he's going to massage things probably a lot better than me and he said which really this is why I'm bringing this up Chris because I looked at Justin and I'm like wow for Vince to say that that doesn't he said the players and I'm paraphrasing a little bit because I don't have it word for word he basically said the players for Vanderbilt looked like they were ready, more than ready, for the game to get over as quick as possible. That's a bad sign to me if I'm Jerry Stackhouse. Do you feel like he's maybe lost this team? First of all, you're, you're right about Vince. I'm acquainted with him. I, I, I do share that opinion. Uh, n- number two, 
I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to tell when it's yeah. really, really bad or, or whether it's yeah. locked in or not. Fair point. Um, yeah. I, to, to, to be to be completely honest, I was covering the end of a baseball game that day uh, and missed a lot of it. I had my my guys. Uh, in fact, I had a guy in the gym there covering it, uh, Julie Dwyer. So I, I'm not. It, it, well, second of all, being in the building and being watching from TV or different things too. Sure. But yeah. It, Absolutely. Look, it's, it, how are you slice it there in a really bad place, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you're right. It is hard to tell. I mean, look, were they going to beat Tennessee in Knoxville? No, they were not. But to not even be competitive, I think that is probably what concerns a lot of the fans. Chris, how many of these games have just not been competitive? I mean, yeah, they're down 31 there's, there's at the half. There's been a lot of them lately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's not forget they're, they're, a, they're less or, yeah, a little bit less than, and then a year removed from when they went down to Tuscaloosa and almost lost by 60 in a conference yeah. game. And, of course, the difference in that and, and where this is headed is, I mean, and you you probably couldn't have given a thousand to one odds on what was about to happen next. But th- literally the day after the, the next, starting with the next game, they turned their season around. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. they had dug, you know, too big of a hole at that point. But but they don't have the. T- there's not a Liam Robbins uh, sitting around waiting to make this happen. I mean, and and it's too late already, even if there were. I think also another layer to this, and you're better equipped again to answer this is. The defections, right? I mean, you got Dia over there tearing it up at Belmont. Just saw Miles Studi, been watching him at South Carolina. Edgy player, certainly a guy I feel like they could have used. But, you know, look, he he checked out on him on the end last year. I didn't agree with that. But he checked out and said, peace out, I'm out of here, and didn't even play in the, in the consolation prize. You've got uh, the kid down at, at, at LSU. The You know, these guys leaving the program – and going, you know, to other SEC schools and making a difference, that, that's that got to be a tough pill to swallow for a lot of folks. Yeah, and I think the thing that people are having a problem with is that <laughs> he's he's pointing a finger at, at, into the air at, at things that aren't really targets when it's his problem to begin with, either – either by running those kids off or creating an environment that they weren't enjoying. And and I've heard a lot of both. I've said, look, there's no denying Jerry Stackhouse knows basketball. He played it at a high level for a very, very long time. The guy knows the game inside and out, but that also does not guarantee that you're going to be a successful head coach. We've seen those examples in all sports littered all over the place, right? And I, I've said on the show, I'm not around them, Chris, on a daily basis. Have I had interactions with Jerry Stackhouse? Yeah. Since he's been here? Yes, I have. I, I don't have any problem with Jerry Stackhouse. He's always been nice to me. I don't have any reason to, you know, have a beef with him. or any problem. I, I don't have any problems with him at all. I just know that in five years, this is going to be year after year five is up. Uh, you know, I, I just know that it's not working. I don't know why it's not working. Again, it's not because he's a ball roller and doesn't know the game. Uh, I just know that there's a disconnect, and it's not working. And I understand he's also signed up for a very, very difficult job. We all know that, right? Anybody who's been here more than five minutes in the city and has been around Vanderbilt, we know it's it's a hard gig. It's a it's a tall mountain to climb. But I just know that it's it's not working. What is your overall perspective of really these five years under Jerry Stackhouse? Well, I can give you a generality, and then I'm happy to drill down to specifics as, as much as you like. Generality is this. Let's look at NBA head coaches who became head coaches in college. I and mean, you can go Danny Manning. You can go Chris Mullen. Mm-hmm. You can go Patrick Ewing. You mm-hmm. can go, if you want to go more current, you can go Penny Hardaway. Mm-hmm. It, it, it never It never works. I mean, I shouldn't say never, but it rarely works. And it's because these guys come to it with a pro mindset that's a lot more relaxed. These guys have made tens of millions of dollars in the NBA. They don't need the job in the way that, a, you know, an up-and-coming mm-hmm. guy would need it. By the way, Avery or, or Johnson. Avery yeah. Johnson's another one. Avery Johnson, yeah. 
and, and Avery Johnson did that in my mind better than most. Yeah, of them. agreed. But agreed. he yeah. still got he still got fired at Alabama, mm-hmm. and the guy that replaced him is doing much better. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think Damon Stoudemire at Georgia Tech is the one that I'm watching to say that one might go a little bit better than some of the others based on some of the upsets they pulled and and how new he is into his tenure there. But but who knows? I mean, that's that's yet to be written, and I think. The commonalities are. I just don't think these guys work as hard at it as other guys do. I don't think they've recruited as hard as other guys do. I think certainly in Jerry's case that's an issue. And guess what? Not long after his tenure, this whole thing got upset. You have to re-recruit your own roster these days. You have to be out there keeping an eye on transfers, and that's that's hard to do from the golf course. Hmm. Yeah, I, I do think it's it's incredibly difficult. Um, Jerry does just does not come off in my time around him, limited time around him. He's just not going to be a guy that he's a no nonsense guy, and he's just not going to cater to them. Like you said, the the landscape is different. And you know, the other part that I hear from a lot of Vanderbilt fans is you know that they he hasn't catered to them, and <laughs> in fact, he's made a lot of them mad with some of the stuff. He's done on social media and what have you. Um, that probably hasn't helped his cause either. I think his concern for his image is a lot greater than his concern for running his basketball team. I'm not saying he doesn't care about the kids. I'm not saying he doesn't want to win. But you can't be jumping into fans' direct messages, scanning what some guy with 29 followers on Twitter says and responding to him and, you know, texting people or messaging people right before, right after it. I mean, right before would be a little hard, but your head's got to be on what's going on. I mean, part, part of life is just how do you schedule your time? Um, I, I, I don't have time to get into trouble with anything serious because I'm so busy all the time. Um, you know, and, and that's because my day is planned out. I've got, things I need to get done and I, I go do them and you know, at the end of the day, I've got enough time to, to read a book or, or watch a few minutes of a TV show or something like that. Uh, t- to me, I, I just think Jerry is a lot more casual in his approach. Um, I, I think he spends a lot of time on the wrong things. I think he spends a lot of time and an ordinary amount of time on things that really don't matter and don't correlate to his basketball success. And I think that's had a lot to do with it too. Chris Lee on the line with this, VandySports.com. You've been at this for a long time. Um, why do you think the program has looked the way that it has since moving on from Kevin Stallings? I mean, so this is going to be seven years in a row. I mean, basically, they have no NCAA tournament experience in the last coming up on a decade. And that that should never happen in Vanderbilt basketball. That, um, you know, what, so why do you think go, this has happened? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to go way above where you're asking because I don't, I don't think you can ever really view anything at Vanderbilt at the at the 10-foot level. and get, I think the more accurate answer is the 30,000-foot level. Mm-hmm. And I think really ever since they took athletics out of they, – they disbanded the athletic department or however they did it. And at the time, they couched it in this and that and the other and more funding and all these things. But I really think – from that moment on, that's been 20 years now, that marked the time where instead of becoming an athletic department, they became a department of athletics. Instead of that position becoming an athletic director, it became a vice chancellor of athletics um, that is expected to look and act and do the things and represent the school and prioritize the things that everybody else is all the other vice chancellors prioritize. And I think when you look at that way, you know, every other SEC school, football is what dictates things. And I'm not saying that's right, but as somebody put to me, you know, if you're going to go serve on the board of trust at Alabama, the, the first question you get is, what's your opinion of the football program? And, and if the answer is, uh, you know, I, I think we should make sure we've always got the highest paid coach and the best facilities, whatever, you know, your chances of being on the board are, are great. If, if the answer is, you know, I, I think we emphasize too, football too much here, it, it's going to be more nice knowing you time to move on. I'm not saying that's the right approach, but as somebody who was a senior administrator of Vanderbilt once put to me, who's no longer there, 
<laughs> and now working at another SEC school, by the way, uh, said to me, you know, it, it, at every other place, sports dictate the decisions, and this is the only one where where it doesn't. It's I don't remember I don't remember the words that he said at the time. I'll, I'll probably think of them as soon as we hang up. But it was it was so profound and it put it in perspective. I think at Vanderbilt they expect the athletic department to just be a part of the school. Competitiveness is just part of the thing. And again, I don't think they want an athletic director as much as they want an administrator over athletics who's a VP who sees the world uh, the, the way that their peers in Kirkland Hall do. And I think that's, I mean, we could do a whole two hours on that, but I think that's a lot of it. I want to ask you a question that's a little bit off the, the court uh, a little bit here. And that is, and I've lived in this town since 1991, okay? So I've been around here a little bit. And I remember Vanderbilt as a university when it comes to athletics being very aggressive, marketing their particular team for tickets. I remember uh, Vanderbilt football, you know, the, the Woody Ball days, or Vanderbilt football, it's good to be gold. Vanderbilt football, experience the memorial magic. Vanderbilt, you know, what whatever, the, the basketball program, I guess. Uh, the You know, Vanderbilt baseball, the Vandy boys, and billboards, and commercials, and, you know, like, they were out there a little bit saying, hey, come check us out. Give us a call. 322 Gold has been tattooed into my brain, whether I like it or not. Uh, across the Nashville landscape, anybody who's been here a little while understands exactly what I'm saying. For me, yeah. they've melted away in that regard. I don't see them. They feel invisible. Am, am I off base? Or is that intentional? Are they still there no. and I'm just not seeing it? What, what's going on? You're, you're not off base at all. That That's something that has to be attacked with some sense of urgency. Uh, it has not been attacked with any sense of urgency at le- for at least four years now. I think it all goes back to the athletic department is, is essentially run by Kirkland Hall. Uh, the people that Kirkland Hall cares about are, are not the fans in the stands. Hey, explain what that means. It, explain what Kirkland Hall means well, for, for somebody who, who Kirk, went to MTSU and doesn't is the, understand. The, yeah, that, that's the administrative arm of Vanderbilt. That's, that's where all the decisions are made. That's where the president's office is. Decisions at Vanderbilt are made by a very small few people. It's, it, you know, it, and as somebody said to me, it, it's a weird place. The chancellor really works more for about 30 vice chancellors than the other way around. I mean, again, this will take a long time to explain, but I'll, I'll put it this way. When you report to the academic arm of the school and the academic arm of the school sees sports as just this thing that you do, uh, now, now, it has to be treated a little differently because the revenues have gone up a lot, and I do mm-hmm. think that means something there. Um, but but they see sports, a lot of those people see sports as a thing where it, it's not something to be gotten rid of, but it's a thing where if you are, if you're too good at sports, there's a concern with some people that your priorities are in the wrong you spot. You lose your luster so academically. Be, yeah, that, that kind of thing. I mean, there's, yeah. there's more to it than that, but I think that's part of it. And when the athletic director is really not reporting to or feels held responsible by the fans and, and is pretty open about that in, in, in some ways, uh, that, that she reports to Kirkland Hall and those guys. And, and by the way, the current athletic director has got three degrees from Vanderbilt. has never been anywhere else. And, I, and I'm not trying to – turn all the targets on Candace Lee, but this is part of the problem is that it, that is, it's such an insular culture. You know, they move media relations underneath the, the umbrella of, of the school's communications department. You know, then, then the logo got changed. One of the few things they had that was iconic. Those folks just do not understand sports at all. And to understand sports, you've got to grow up a fan. You've got to grow up. They, they, they don't. They're academic people that I think sometimes try to understand it. But, but they don't any more than I would under, try to, you know, parachute and understand what it takes to run a chemistry department or whatever. Um, but the control and power are a big thing over there. There's, there's something in life of realizing when you're out of your depth and things need to be delegated. I don't think that is in them at all. Um, I think they think they're smart people. They, they should and 
run everything. I think they're very much ideologues. And, and I just think, set that aside for a minute. Here's the other piece of it, too. Vanderbilt's rolling in money, okay? Yeah. I, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter when there's empty seats, but w- when, you're, when your attitude towards athletics is very casual to begin with, and let, let's say you're hosting Kentucky and there's 11,000 people in the gym, and, and 7,500 of them are Kentucky fans or whatever it was this year, uh, that m- money's still money. Uh, the color of your money is still green. And I think to some extent that doesn't matter to them. Now, when, when the whole gate receipts fall to a point where it hurts them, uh, that, that I think that matters some. But here's the other thing, guys. Somebody told me they've got about 30 mega donors at the school. Um, I'm, okay. I'm talking about like your – in some instances, like your Mark Cuban types. And so whatever pain they feel in terms of, oh, well, you know, season tickets went down from 9000 to 4000 or whatever. I, I'm just throwing them out out there. But although I wouldn't be surprised if I'm far off. You, you can get one dude somewhere who, who cares nothing about sports to write one check that dwarfs that. And I think that's part of the issue, too. My last thing for me is I have a theory, and, and it, it drives Darren crazy, and, and but that's okay. I'm going to spit it out to you. My theory is they're in a very much of a mode of parting our dust because of the construction yeah. that's going on over there. And I believe they're not going to do anything major as far as trying to improve sports and athletics until – the construction is finished, and then after that, they will try to drive people back to the campus because they will want to show off the things they have been doing. But until that is done, I, I think they're going to be very hands-off as far as trying to improve the product on the field a whole lot, which I think is going to behoove them to keep the current coaching structures across the board in place until the construction is finished. That's my theory. I've got no proof. You're over there all the time. What say you? Well, I, I agreed with you on that until this weekend. I agreed with you less starting probably Sunday and Monday and as of this morning. My guess, and I'm not reporting this as fact because I don't know it, and I don't even know the decision to be made. I, I think they are a lot more towards making a coaching change than, than I thought they were this time yesterday. And at least that's something I think that would be a right step and – so we'll see what happens. I for men's basketball, just to be clear, for men's basketball. Yeah, for men's basketball. I, I do think, and I did not think it when I went to bed last night, but I think mm. as of this morning, based on the information, I, I do believe, and, and I'm not, I'm not. this is not reporting that they've made a decision. This is not reporting that it's happening. And, and I kind of need to keep what I know to myself here. Uh, and in fact, I was asked that on the condition of the information. But I, I think they're – if, if you had to say you've got to bet your life on will they make a coaching change or will they not at the end of the season, uh, I, I, first of all, I'd hope I wouldn't have to bet my life. But I, I would I would be – I'm now more in the direction that they will make a change than that they want. Mm. 7.30 tonight is tip. It'll be on SEC Network. It's hard to gauge from television as we wrap this up. But check out the stands tonight. Vanderbilt hosting Georgia. My guess is it's going to be really, really – light in there chris always appreciate it man thanks so much for doing this thank you sir and we will certainly check in with you soon man have a great rest of the week you you bet thank you always enjoy it chris lee chris lee 70 on x if you want to give him a follow and you should he also uh covers vanderbilt athletics for vannysports.com and has been doing it for a long time 615-844-5600 is the phone line and the text line. we've got a lot of text rolling in a lot of stuff to get to we're wide open the rest of the hour if you want to get involved. More of the McFarland Show here on WNSR. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. A friend of mine just bought a new house for the first time. A new house. I mean, my wife and I loved to own a house. So I asked him how he did it. And he smiled and he said he went to the knowledge tree. 
<laughs> he had this happy look on his face. So I told him to tell me more. And he said, John, the lack of knowledge will keep you poor. Then he handed me a brochure. It was from Knowledge Tree Mortgage. Now I understood. And after one phone call, I understood even more. Knowledge Tree Mortgage specializes in first-time home buyers, folks like me who get the runaround from banks. And he got us pre-qualified. Knowledge Tree Mortgage got us our mortgage. And tomorrow, my wife and I are going to become first-time home buyers. Here's the number, 859-9599. 859-9599. Money doesn't grow on trees. Knowledge does. Knowledge Tree Mortgage, 859-9599. 859-9599. Have you ever met a single person in your life that enjoys paying taxes? No, no one does. If you can't sleep at night because you have a huge problem with the IRS, I've got some free advice for you. This service is strictly limited to individuals that owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes. And if you qualify, we can guarantee that you won't be writing a big fat check to the IRS or our services cost you nothing. The first 100 people that call today will get a free tax consultation worth $500. Stop worrying about your IRS problem. We can help you. We promise. Call the tax doctor right now. I mean right now to learn more. 800-649-0142. That's 800-649-0142. It's a Bill King Show. We are college football centric. That is the sun that warms our planet that we live on. Our planet actually isn't flat or round. It's an oblong spheroid. And we are here to proselytize about it, edify it every day on this here radio show. Weekday mornings beginning at 6 on Sports Radio 560 on 95.9 FM. Your exclusive national sports radio, WNSR Sky Scan Forecast. Today we'll see an abundance of sunshine, the high temperature 68 degrees, partly the mostly cloudy tonight, low 52. Thursday, cloudy showers become likely, perhaps a thunderstorm, high 66. Utilizing the resources of the Motherbug Network on National Sports Radio, I'm WNSR's meteorologist, Jim Rinaldi. Sports Radio, WNSR. You're listening to The McFarland Show live on WNSR Nashville Sports Radio. Appreciate Chris Lee for joining us. Like I said, Vanderbilt hosts Georgia tonight. And oof, I guess it's going to be really light in there. Interesting little nugget. Chris dropped in our lap on the way out. Yeah. How about that? Acting like uh, things may be getting kind of serious about a change over there. Look, I... I'm not surprised, but I mean, I'm also not surprised if they were, as you just heard in that interview, a place that operated like everybody else, (laughs) right? Like there's no (laughs) program in the country where your coach in a, you know, in this case, the top conference in the country can go five years without making the NCAA tournament, which is 68 teams and survive. Like there is no job, Uh, you know, you can't, you can't survive that. Typically not. And but it's this but, is not no normal other, yeah. operating procedures. Yeah, but say most other programs aren't built like theirs. But but here's the thing, and I we've got Eric and you know, I'll just start with Eric in Columbia, who's sure. been writing a lot of messages on our YouTube page. And thank you, Eric, as always. But you know, he he wanted me to ask Chris about maybe some possible replacements. Of course, these are names that we would recognize here, you know, like Casey Alexander, Rick Bird, who's retired, no. Kermit Davis and all that. So look, I I don't know if I really want to get into all that now because this is he, – he's still the head coach. And th- this is much bigger th- because here's the questions I have. All right. And you've heard me say this so many times. Look, I don't care what line of work you're in, whether it's sports and athletics, whether it's radio, television, whether it's fill-in-the-blank any job, any job. If you don't have competent people above you, if you don't have help from the people above you, you cannot succeed. 
You cannot and will not succeed. You will not be good. You have to have help because those are the decision makers. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who can help you and arm you with the proper equipment. You know, if it's if it's sure. a logistics warehouse, whatever. Again, fill in the blank. It doesn't matter if the people above you are incompetent. You cannot win. You cannot have, or you definitely can't sustain any success. And so, I I just wonder, like, how many? I, I get it. It's SEC. It's Nashville. It's going to be attractive. You'll always find people that will want to sign up. But I think there's also a lot of other people that will be like, yeah, no, I'm good. I am not. I am not commit, committing coaching suicide and signing up for that gig because I can't win there. If I'm not going to, if I'm going into that job, which is already hard in the SEC, right? The SEC has made Greg Sankey made a point of emphasis to get this league better at basketball, and they are. Yeah. Right. They have some really good coaches in this conference now. Really good coaches, Rick Barnes and Nate Oates. And, you know, I don't need to go down the list. Everybody sure. knows the list. Musselman, <laughs> until this year, has done a fantastic job at Arkansas. Mm -hmm. It's a hard enough job as it is. But if you come into this job with your hands tied behind your back and somebody's taped your legs together, well, good luck. <laughs> and maybe it blindfolded you, too, on certain days. That's going to make it hard it to be good. It does make it a little bit more difficult to get it done. I will say that, you know, and again, I've told the story before. I've had a, a, a university president tell me, when do you know you need to fire a coach? And again, he told me to my to my face, if a coach goes four years or longer without competing for a conference championship or getting close, because for him, the way he explained it, it's all about student experience because no recruiting is going to do better than students coming from your program and having glowing things to say. He yeah. said that's the best recruitment tool in the world is, you know, instead of one recruiter, you've got 10, 12, 30, or whatever you got coming out of your school every year, spreading the good news of the gospel of your particular school. He says nothing beats that. And by the way, that applies to workplaces too. It does. If you have a great work yes. environment, people are going to tell people. Yeah. Like this is the great, a great place a great to work. Place to come if be. it's a horrible place to work, guess what all the that people tell people? And he says it's if no people different. are coming through their program and are not having good experiences, good luck. it's going to kill your program. And he says for him, that's when you know if I got a freshman all the way to a senior and you came here to spend four years of your life and you don't have at least a championship experience. Maybe you didn't win the conference championship, but you made it all the way to the conference championship game. You got something to take with you, a memory. You have good something, memories. Something. He says that he said I can live with a coach mm -hmm. with that, but if you're doing four years of nothing but losing, and you're bringing these young folks in here, and they've done four years of nothing, and nobody's spreading the gospel about your place, we got to make a change. He said there's yep. a culture problem, and we got to get out. All right, final break. Come back. Wrap up the first hour next here on WNSR. Looking for something to take your mind off this traffic? How about a true story of instant success? Did you hear about the two friends who went grocery shopping in Ashland City and picked up everything on their list plus $75,000? Or the one where a truck driver made a last-minute stop off Interstate 40 and drove off with a cool million? All their lives changed in an instant, and yours could too. So stop by your local retailer for your chance with instant games from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing, life-changing fun. Please play responsibly. Your brain is an amazing thing. But as you get older, it naturally begins to change causing a lack of sharpness or even trouble with recall. Thankfully, the breakthrough in Prevagen helps your brain and actually improves memory. The secret is an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. Based on a clinical study of subgroups of individuals who are cognitively normal or mildly impaired, Prevagen has been shown to improve memory. A Pharmacy Times National Survey of Pharmacists rated Prevagen the number one pharmacist-recommended memory support brand for the fifth year in a row. You can find it in the vitamin aisle in stores everywhere without a prescription. Help your memory. Try Prevagen today. Prevagen. Healthier brain, better life. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.
As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. I like putting parlay bets together, hammering the overs, and anytime player touchdown bets always have me on the edge of my seat. So if you're ready to do the same, visit FanDuel.com win and kick off the NFL season. That's FanDuel.com win. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 21 plus and President Kentucky. First online real money wager only $5 pregame money line wager required. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. When was the last time you did something fun with family, friends, co workers, and clients? What if I told you about a place under one roof that offers affordable entertainment for all ages? That's what you'll find at Strike and Spare Family Fun Centers in Donaldson, Hermitage, Tusculum, Hendersonville, and Murfreesboro with bowling, games, food, drink, and entertainment for all ages. Enjoy an enhanced experience in Hendersonville or Murfreesboro where they feature additional fun with bumper cars, laser tag, roller skating, and more. All locations are open seven days a week, including holidays. Visit online at strikeandspare.com. Strike and Spare, where fun is bowling. It's the McFarlane Show with Darren McFarlane and Fox 17's Justin McFarlane. Patrick Mahomes, he's in the GOAT conversation with this win. I'm calling him Michael Jordan, essentially, because he's taking other people's rings. There's no shame in losing to Patrick Mahomes. He's that good. If you just got bested by Patrick Mahomes, you just got bested by Patrick Mahomes. It's Patrick Mahomes, GOAT-level kind of guy. The McFarlane Show with Darren and Justin on Nashville Sports Radio WNF. You're listening live from the Strike and Spare Studios, downtown Music City. It's the McFarland Show. We'll check in with Steve Lehman to begin the second hour of the program. He is in Iowa. Tonight, Belmont will take on Drake. Okay. Should be a good game. Yeah. Belmont has been getting hot here okay. of late. So. Yeah. But we'll talk also about the Titans. Um, look, as we wrap up the month of February... Things are going to start really heating up. Combine next week. On the NFL side, you got combine, Mm -hmm. free agency. They're already in the tag period, the tag window, which will close on what, March 5th, I think? I don't have the NFL calendar. I don't have that. I think it's like March 5th is when you have to, that's when the window, the tag window closes. So it's open now. Uh, I don't think that affects the Titans at all. No, I don't think they're they're tagging tagging anybody. They're not tagging anybody. No. But we'll get into all that with Steve uh, coming up here in the second hour of the program. Nice enough to join us on a game day. But as he told me, he's like, I'm just hanging out, waiting for Tip. (laughs) (laughs) Hanging out in Iowa. Right. In February. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like, you know, it's action-packed out there. Right. I doubt there was a lot to do today before the game. Just like Vegas. No difference. <laughs> right. Same thing. No difference. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Lots uh, and lots of fun. Preds uh, will be in L.A. tomorrow night to take on the Keens. So another late night hockey. Maybe they can catch a show out there in L.A. I mean, there's, you know, there's something to Plenty do. Plenty to do out there. Yeah. And, you know, maybe U 2s not there. I mean, it's something. You can find something. Like I, like I said, I suspect they're going to have a successful road trip. What does that mean? For me, yeah, what does success mean? It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It means that they should still be talking to people, and if they can sell and get pieces, they should do it. Well, some of our listeners think they should be holding out for four first round picks yeah. and some prospects. Look, the price for UC will be <laughs> I think there's somebody will somebody will come with a very generous offer, but it's not gonna be a it's not gonna be a Brinks truck. No. All right, that's going to do it for the first hour. We'll come back. Steve Lehman to begin the second hour. We'll have a good discussion with him. We'll do that next here on the McFarland Show, WNSR.
ABC News, I'm Michelle Franzen. The Senate passed foreign aid package for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan on hold until the House returns from break. ABC's Stephen Portnoy says another government shutdown deadline is also looming. Lawmakers remain on recess until the middle of next week. When the House and Senate do come back, they'll have just days to reach agreement to avoid a partial government shutdown that would start a week from this Friday. House Republicans don't seem to have a clear vision for agency funding or for Ukraine aid, with GOP moderates and members of the far right pulling Speaker Mike Johnson in two opposite directions. In Gaza, a growing food crisis for the more than nearly two million Palestinians caught in the crossfire of the Israel-Hamas war. The U.S. and Arab nations still working to broker a ceasefire and hostage release deal that would also boost aid shipments into Gaza. James Biden, the brother of President Biden on Capitol Hill today, facing questions by House Republicans in the impeachment inquiry into the Biden family business dealings. This is ABC News. Give the star in your life the brightest gift in the world. Name a star after them. This is Rocky Moselle with International Star Registry. For $59 and a call to 800-282-3333 or visit starregistry.com, you can name a star for birthdays, weddings, or even memorials. Over 45 years, we have named millions of stars for celebrities and individuals from around the world. The star you name will be recorded in book form in the U.S. Copyright Office. Visit starregistry.com or call 800-282-3333. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came, and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards. Rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000, and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. WNS. Nashville Sports Radio. Bar Lines at the Omni Nashville Hotel downtown is at the heart of Music City. Located within walking distance of the Country Music Hall of Fame, Bar Lines at the Omni is your downtown honky-tonk destination. Watch your team for many seat on their plentiful HD TVs and catch a live show on the Bar Lines stage featuring live music seven days a week. Bar Lines has the ultimate southern comfort food. Get started with classic fried green tomatoes or bourbon barbecue wings. Then it's on to the massive Smashville double stack or the world famous bar lines grinder oh you've never heard of the bar lines grinder two kinds of cheese lettuce dijon smoked turkey smoked bacon smoked ham now that's some smoke you want local brews and local spirits are on tap at bar lines take a seat on the patio outside and soak up the rhythm of music city bar lines at the omni nashville hotel fifth avenue downtown You can't handle the truth. It's about to go off. Live from the WNSR Strike and Spare Studios. Just a bit outside. Now back to the McFarlane Show with Darren McFarlane and Fox 17's Justin McFarlane. Go me the money! Call or text now. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Call us or send us a text on the WNSR text line. 615-844-5600. 615-844-5600. Call or text. Same number. Oh, righty then. Now, the McFarland Show with Darren and Justin. Second hour on this Wednesday afternoon rolling along. 70 degrees here in Middle Tennessee, and we will take that in February, 100%. Mm-hmm. Darren and Justin, we're live in the Strike and Spare Family Fun Center studio. Adam Johnson is alongside. He's filling in for T.J. Damon. Today, let's head out to Iowa, where Steve Lehman, News Channel 5, is on the line with us. Why is he in Iowa? Well, Belmont and Drake. That's where Drake is. Tonight, yes, for people who didn't know that. Let's find out if the weather is better than here because yesterday steve we went out to vegas and our guests told us that it was cold and rainy in vegas we had better weather than las vegas what uh what's going on in iowa today all right well then i've got better weather than vegas too but i don't know if i'm quite as good as you guys at 70 so it's it's kind of like 58 59 degrees but there's not a cloud in the sky here so almost all of the snow is melted at this point and I think they're thinking about spring here in the middle of Iowa. Hmm. Well, that's what it did. That did happen on February second, right? We are supposed to get to spring sooner rather than later. I hope so. Yeah, that's the word. 
Uh, I'm over winter regardless. So. Yeah. Uh, Belmont seems to be putting things together at the right time. They've been playing some good basketball of late. Yeah, really have played four straight games uh, that I would say are about the best four games that they've played, certainly consecutively all season long, putting it together on both ends of the floor. Jacoby Gillespie's back in the lineup. To me, he's the best point guard in this league. Mm. And you put him back on the floor after breaking his wrist in January, and you see the immediate difference. They went three and five without him. Now that he's been back and fully in the flow, they've won four straight, and I think are playing their best basketball. Huge test tonight. Dregs tied for first. They went to the NCAA tournament last year, probably should have beaten the Miami team. They got into a, the Elite Eight in round one. Tucker DeVries is the reigning Larry Bird Conference Player of the Year. He's back and probably going to win that award again. So a huge challenge on the road tonight, trying to snap the nation's longest home court winning streak. But Belmont's playing as good as they have all year, so why not? I did. I think I saw a clip of Casey Alexander. I think it was on News Channel 5 that, uh, that you played. <laughs> he said, it's amazing how much better of a coach I became when Gillespie got back in the lineup. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Good players help, you know. <laughs> and Belmont's had a lot of those guys over the course of the years, but especially when you have a point guard who also happens to be your best defensive player, I think it makes a huge difference. He leads the league in steals. He's also a guy who gets you 17 points a game and four-plus assists per game and four-plus rebounds per game. And you add all that up, it's a whole lot of production, and it makes everybody around him not just better, but it also takes some of the pressure off because – now, if you were guarding the best player, now you're guarding the second best player. And everybody just kind of slots down the line a little bit because of that. And I think it's made Belmont much better. Whether it will be good enough tonight, whether it will be good enough in a couple of weeks at Arch Madness in St. Louis, we'll find out. But certainly Belmont feels as confident today as it has at any point this season. I believe it looks like the window is closing or is closed with Brian Callahan and staff. Titans put out there that uh, he's uh... – formally I introduced three more staff members to his coaching staff. I don't want to get any great details, Steve, because I get it. Like we, for the most part, we don't know anything about these guys other than, you know, Googling their names and looking at what they've done. But overall, just your impressions of Brian Callahan's first ever staff as the head coach of the Titans. I like it a lot, Darren, just because I think he did all the things that you would want a guy who's in his position as a first-time NFL head coach to do. He's, he wants to be an offensive head coach. He is an offensive head coach. And I think he's surrounded himself with people that will allow him to do what he wants to do on the offensive side of the ball. Huge coup in getting his dad to help with the offensive line, which we all know needs to be upgraded in a big way. He's got a childhood buddy that, that he went to high school literally with in the quarterback room that can be his right-hand man in terms of teaching and constructing the offense. I think that's all great. And then on the defensive side of the ball, he's got one of the sharpest, bright young minds defensively in the league in Denard Wilson to be his defensive head coach. And he's got a lot of experienced guys over there as well, guys who've coached in the league for multiple decades, have taught for a long time. And I think that's important. When you've got some young guys and key roles on your staff, to surround them with people who've been in the league and been coaching for a long time. Whether that means anything when they get to September, your guess is as good as mine on that. But just in terms of grading the things he set out to do and what he actually did, I think it was a pretty good job. Who do you think is going to be Will Levis's backup next season? <laughs> Man, I don't have any idea. That, that's my best answer. I really don't have any idea. Obviously, Malik Willis is under contract. I don't know if they're ready to move on from that necessarily. I also don't think they have a whole lot of belief in him. So I've got to think that they're going to go out and sign somebody else. I don't think they'll spend a draft pick on it. So then you just go into the free agency pool and how much are you willing to spend and what type of guy do you want to bring in? I'm just and wondering so if a new I, set of eyes – and a new philosophy, uh, you know, a different approach changes anything. And I have, I don't know the answer. I'm just I'm just curious. I mean, look I what Brian probably, Callahan did and the Bengals did with Jake Browning, and none of us saw that coming. I think it probably solidifies it. That, I guess that's just my thought. You know, I was ready 
And I think, frankly, the previous regime was ready to move on from Malik Willis anyway. And so you were going to have to go into a new um, new type of thing. And now you have a new guy coming in with Callahan and a quarterback guy. And that, I, I just think it probably solidifies that you're looking for probably a veteran in that spot to help tutor Will Levis. Not that he needs a whole lot of help in that regard, but I think just somebody who can be in the quarterback room and help him out and look at game plans each week and just provide another perspective in that room. I think that's what you're looking for. And hopefully you don't get to a place where that guy has to play. But if he does have to play, you've got a little bit more confidence in his experience and stepping on the field than you probably do right now with Malik Willis. Okay, I'm going to throw some UFAs at you, and you you tell us if they're back or he gone. Okay? <laughs> Danico Autry. I, I would do everything in my power to bring mm. him back if I could. I think he's been really good for this team. I don't think he's going to be terribly expensive. Probably a shorter-term type of deal for him. So I would do just about everything I could to bring him back because I think you put him next to Jeffrey Simmons up front, and already you've got a pretty potent defensive line. He made over $7 million last year, <clears throat> and he's going to be 34 years old this season. Well, that's why it's got to be a shorter-term deal. I'm not giving that guy four or five years where you have to guarantee a certain amount of things, but I, I didn't see any drop-off in him last year. And so I look at him as a guy who's coming back this year. He's going to be a really productive player. And so if I were them, I'm giving him, uh, you know, a two-year type of deal that maybe you can get out of after this year and thinking he's going to be a guy that's going to be really productive for me this season. Okay. Aziz Ashir. See, <laughs> see I, I think he's another guy that's probably back just because of his relationship with Grant Carthon hmm. and because of what he – means in the locker room and in terms of just kind of being the defensive play caller that they have he was super productive last year in terms of the tackles so i I would think he will be back in one one way or another he made five million last year so i know it was a one-year deal so can you get him for another one-year deal i don't know maybe probably not since he's a ufa um okay have somebody in that role that's got true consistency for you yep so. All right, how about a couple of wide receivers? Chris Moore and Nick Westbrook-Akini. See, now this is where it gets really intriguing to me because I don't think you bring both of them back. And so what are you looking for here? Are you looking for the guy who is kind of consistently productive? Sorry, I have uh, sirens going by me right now. But uh, are you looking for the guy who's pr- consistently productive within your offense and whatever thing you're trying to do? And I would have said that was Nick Westbrook Akina, at least in the old offense with Mike Rabel and trying to block down field and doing all those sort of things. Or are you looking for the guy who gives you a little bit more of an explosive presence? That would be Chris Moore. And so if you would have asked me this two months ago when Mike Rabel and his staff were still in charge, I would have said that I think you're leaning to NWI in that city. Hmm. I'm not sure that's the case anymore. It may be Chris Moore. All right. And finally, uh, from me, Christian Fulton. I know everybody thinks it's a foregone conclusion, but again, we do have to factor in new set of eyeballs. So that could change things on, you know, how this actually plays out. Yeah. I'll be surprised if Fulton is back. I just think it went so poorly last year for whatever reason, whether it's a health thing, whether it's uh, not seeing eye to eye with the coaching staff sort of thing, but, I just don't see how you spend much money in that contract. And I would imagine there'll be somebody else out there who looks at him and says, this is a second round pick with a lot of talent. Maybe a fresh opportunity would be good for him. I imagine he gets paid elsewhere and I wouldn't want to match that if I were the Titans. Question about the the rollout of the offensive and defensive coordinator, and this may be a little inside baseball, but I, I want to put it out there for everybody. The fact that they had a press conference for the offensive and defensive coordinator for the Titans, and and not only did they have a press conference, they brought them out separately and sat them next to the head coach and did separate 
joint press conferences for over an hour and took exhaustive questions and the special team. I mean, th- this is unusual for me from everything I've known of this football team. It was one of the most unusual things I I'd, I'd seen, and it made me say, boy, things are really going to be different here if this is what we're doing here. Uh, if we're sitting down like this and doing this big of a rollout, I'm not sure we would have had any rollout uh, for an offensive-defensive coordinator under certain regimes if they made this kind of move. We just might meet them, you know, at minicamp or something. You know, we wouldn't meet them at all. And the fact they're doing these long uh, press conferences at the beginning, well, what does that say to you, if anything, Steve? I just think, Justin, that it's a friendlier place to be right now. And, again, I've said that a few times, and I really don't mean this as a knock on the old staff. I, I frankly got along with them pretty well and thought they were pretty good at their jobs. I just think when you walked in, it was all business all the time. And if you weren't one of them, it's not that you weren't welcome, but they weren't exactly rolling the red carpet out for you. And it just feels like in all my interactions when you talk to these guys, and we sat down with Brian Callahan last week and it's played on Sunday Sports Central, I keep saying this. He's just a good dude. He just seems like a normal guy who happens to be an NFL head coach now. And I think that's basically the guys he surrounded himself with. And it's a bunch of guys who are good people who happen to be really good football coaches who put themselves in these positions now. And it seems like the Titans kind of want to show that off. It seems like they want to be a little bit more front and center with what they have. And I don't think that hurts in terms of the public perception. It also doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to win more games no. when we get to next year. But, yeah, I think back to when Mike Grable was hired. I don't know this, but I'm going to say I'm 99% sure that there was no press conference with Dean Pease and Matt LaFleur after he was hired. I, I think we talked to them for the first time somewhere during OTA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yes, this is, this is very different that the idea we got to sit down with all of them and Callahan was up there and we got whatever it was, 45, 50 minutes going between the two of them. And I thought it was really informative. I've learned more about what he thought of both of them and what they thought about this position. One thing I guess I'll highlight there, because I just thought it was fascinating. One of my big concerns was Callahan as a first year head coach and first year play caller and just how you juggle all of that. And he basically talked through during that press conference, how the game planning and play calling works. And he basically said, look, Most of the play calling, at least early in the game, is formulaic. You put it together throughout the week, and it is literally like calling it off of a sheet when you get to the first third and six or third and seven. Everybody knows what the play is. So you don't don't actually have a guy who's necessarily sitting in the booth or standing on the sideline in this case who's dreaming up, okay, now it's third and seven, got to run this. It is formulaic at the start of the game. He said where you really start to make your money as a great play caller is when you need to adjust and you get off of that. And that can be early in the game or that could be at halftime in the second half. That's where you make your money and that's where he certainly is going to have to. But it made a little bit more sense of why you'd walk into that position feeling like, I know exactly what I'm doing here and it's not going to be overwhelming to be the head coach in charge of game management and also having to come up with all those play calls throughout So I thought that was really interesting. And again, I'm not sure we would have gotten that from every other coaching staff. Denard Wilson talking about his background with Rand Carthen. I jumped out at me as well. The the fact that these two guys have been sitting around talking about what certain things would be like for at least the last 10 years or so, you know, eight, eight or nine years as they've come up through the ranks together. And it makes me think a lot that, we're starting to really see Rand Carthen's fingerprints on this organization much more than than what we have been able to tell before. Because now, after hearing about that, I'm convinced that there's no way that Denard Wilson is here if Rand Carthen is not the GM. I'm not sure Brian Callahan's here if Rand Carthen's not the GM, Justin. He talks very highly of how they hit it off in those meetings and He was highly sought after. He was going to have multiple other interviews for head coaching opportunities, and I think he was going to be a top candidate at multiple of those stops. And so would he have ended up in Tennessee if it wasn't for him hitting it off immediately with Rand Carthon and believing in the vision that Carthon sold him? I don't know. But there's no question that once Callahan was here, that a lot of the guys that they have hired – 
either have a connection straight out to Callahan, or if he didn't have a guy in mind, he turned to Carson and either guys that he knew flat out or guys that he could use his connections around the league to help them set up interviews and find. And so I think there's no question that Rand Carthon's fingerprints are all over what this Titan staff is now. I'd still love to know a little bit more about what he did in his first 12 months on the job, how much of the decisions of those 12 months were Rand Carthon versus Mike Vrabel versus collaboration, as they talked about, because I think it would tell us a whole lot more about his talent evaluation and some of the decision-making he has already done in terms of personnel. But in terms of the execution of this coaching search and then helping develop the staff for Callahan, I think Rand Carthon has been instrumental and very valuable. There's one more hire that the Titan staff needs to make, and it may be the most critical hire when you think about it, and that is they're looking for a brand-new head strength and conditioning coach. Now, I know that's not something we focus on quite a bit, um, as much as offense or defensive coordinator or even special teams coach. But when you think about the amount of injuries that this team has had over the last couple of seasons, um, and I know they've kept a lot of the uh, the staff under the strength and conditioning coach, uh, I would imagine they know what they're looking for when it comes to this hire, and for whatever the reason, they haven't found him yet. But, but I am going to be fascinated to see if it leads to – whether it's style of practice or strength and conditioning or whatever, if there's going to be less injuries on this football team next year. I agree. I think that it should be something that Titans fans are interested in because the strength and conditioning coach is the guy who gets your players tougher. He's the guy who gets them in shape. He's the guy who hopefully keeps them away from injuries. And if we're being honest, that hasn't happened nearly enough in the last few years. And Mike Vrabel always deflected it, saying it was more like bad luck than it was bad training. But at some point, a trend becomes a thing. And I think we're long past the place where the Titans' injury issues are a thing, at least under the old regime. And so maybe it's just simply moving on to a new coaching staff. But part of it, I think, is the training that they have to do in the strength and conditioning center and in the weight room and all that stuff. And that guy's going to be critical to that position. So I I don't know exactly what they're looking for. I don't know their connections on who it might be. But I do think that is a very important hire because this team has to find a way to keep especially its best players on the field more consistently. Steve, have a great game tonight. Well, I'm good, Cole. I mean, you're not playing. So have a great – enjoy the game tonight. And uh, Steve put up a double-double tonight. (laughs) And a great rest (laughs) of your week. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Steve. Trying to figure out what a double double on my end would be tonight, but I don't think it's good. Regardless, <laughs> hopefully they play better. Maybe an Iowa burger joint, yeah. with a double double. I don't know. Go. Steve, thanks, yeah. man. All right, guys, be good. Steve yeah. Layman, News Channel Five. Good stuff from him as always. Belmont and Drake tonight, seven o'clock. Their uh, Bruins on the road. We're wide open the rest of the hour. If you want to get involved in the show, six one five eight four four fifty six hundred. That is our phone line and our text line. You can uh, communicate with the show uh, through our YouTube page as well, WNSR Live, in the sh- uh, search box. By the way, I don't know if you've heard, mm-hmm. but there's news about MLB in Nashville. Uh, this was out there oh, yesterday. Oh, boy. So, I mean, we may have to get into that, too. I mean, all kinds of new news on MLB in Nashville. It's okay. weird. So, we can talk to you. More of the McFarland Show next here on WNSR. Buyandtow.com. Get cash for junk cars. You have a vehicle that's become a problem? You can get cash in your hand today and your vehicle hauled away. They'll buy your vehicle no matter the condition, in your driveway, at your mechanic shop, or even on the side of the road. You can call them at 615-480-6473 or visit buyandtow.com. Get cash in your hand today and your vehicle hauled away. 615-480-6473. Buyandtow.com. That's buyandtow.com. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-617-0239. Don't lose hope. 
TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and Yelp and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-617-0239. That's 800-617-0239. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. It seems like everywhere you look right now, someone is sick. This year, prepare your family for airborne invaders like bacteria, pollen, and yes, germs with Navage Nasal Care. Navage flushes ultra-pure, refreshing saline in one nostril, around the back of the nose, and out of the other nostril. Navage sucks out viruses, dust, and other airborne particles, all the stuff that gets trapped in your nose making you miserable. Don't get caught empty-handed this winter. Get Navage, the drug-free solution that helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier. Even better, Navage is HSA, FSA eligible, so Navage is a great way to spend those funds before they expire. Don't wait a minute longer. Buy Navage today and you'll breathe easier knowing you're putting your funds to good use. Navage is available online at navage.com or Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Clean nose, healthy life. Hi, I'm Jeff Fisher. You know, you've probably heard by now that the Nashville Cats are coming back to Music City. Well, you are correct. They're coming back, and they're coming in hot starting April 27th with the first of five home games at the historic Municipal Auditorium. There will be an additional game at f and Bank Arena in mid-May up in Clarksville, and that will be honoring our military. Single-game tickets as well as season tickets are on sale now. For more information, come visit thenashvillecats.com. Hey, it's John Burton from News Channel 5 and the Greg Bogan John Burton Show. And I'm former All-Pro linebacker for the Tennessee Titans, also known as Mr. Monday Night, Keith Bullock. And I'm Patton Cook. We're inviting you to join us every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 for What's Good with KB and JB, the podcast show. All live on Nashville Sports Radio and all streaming platforms. We talk Titans. We talk SEC football. We talk NBA. We talk everything. And we also get a little petty from time to time. Make sure you join us. The McFarland Show, video streaming live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube from the Strike and Spare Studio. Wide open the rest of the hour, 615-844-5600. We've touched on a lot of subjects today. Yeah. Predators went out to Vegas and beat the Golden Knights last night. What does that mean after the story we told you about on Monday and Tuesday where Barry Trotz, who got out in Sportsnet, Barry Trotz had basically put a kibosh to them uh, going to straight to Vegas from St. Louis. They came back home mm-hmm. after beating the Blues. We talked to Chris Lee about Vanderbilt basketball. Of course, Vanderbilt uh, plays Georgia tonight at Memorial Gym. That's a 7.30 tip. That'll be on SEC Network. And Chris Lee kind of dropped a little nugget on the way out of yeah. he's kind of hearing that maybe it's going, that a change is, is coming. By the way, Florida mm-hmm. at Alabama is an interesting college basketball game tonight on ESPN2. That'll be at 6 o'clock. Kentucky at LSU. That'll be at 8 o'clock on ESPN. And Ole Miss at Mississippi State, ESPN2 tonight, also at 8 o'clock. And uh, you just heard our conversation with Steve Lehman, News Channel 5, about the Titans. So a lot of stuff mm-hmm. going on yesterday. I saw it again, Justin. Yeah, you're going to keep seeing it, but come on. Yeah. Yeah, we got, oh, we got a, what, a Major League Baseball story? What? What? Yeah. Yeah. A headline. Where would Nashville's Major League Baseball team play? Here are the counties that are getting a look. And I'm like, okay, here we go. So, there are some quotes, though, so I will read those. Come on with it. We are in the final stages of completing a document. Who's that we're- we? Who's this speaking? is the uh, Music City Baseball Managing Director, John Lore. Okay. Okay. We are in the final stages of completing a document that we're going to share that includes everything we've looked at since we've been here. They've been here five years. Mm-hmm. It's always been part of our business model and our objective to enter the market 
understand the market, Mm -hmm. remove the obstacles, Mm -hmm. and identify where a ballpark can be built and how to pay for it. Major things there. It's kind of a big deal. (laughs) Kind of a big deal. Lore uh, Lore, uh, hired real estate development company Mortensen to conduct a site and market analysis. Okay. Sites in Davidson County, Rutherford County, and Williamson County were all studied. Mm Mm-hmm. Lohr uh, declined to reveal the specific site that were studied, but said they would be available when the report is complete in about four months. There you go. So. That's always been the biggest, well, the the two biggest questions with this has always been, who's going to own the team? Who's got to have the money, the legit money, the money man, who's going to be the uh, or, or woman, who's going to be the majority owner of this thing. And number two, of course, and it's really two and three, but where are you going to build a ballpark and how are you going to pay for it? Those are, you know, the, no, those to me are one and the same because one doesn't come without the other, but they're really two separate questions. So who's going to own the team? Who's going to be the majority owner and where are they building the ballpark and how are they paying for it? That, that those are the big questions. If somebody can draw lines to me, for me, for all of that, I can start getting behind the fact that this is more fact than fiction. But we'll we'll see. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and we we just need to stop with every time this story comes up, which has and been a lot over five happen. years, yeah. that, you know, that Major League Baseball is interested in Nashville as a franchise. Expansion City. Yeah, they are. Wow. They've okay, made that well, very clear. That's, that's we've by the way, we've heard this for not five years. We've heard this for a decade. Yeah. The story's over a decade old. Over a decade old. Yeah, but you still need the stars to align correctly. Okay. So do you believe that they're actually looking at sites in Rutherford County? Do you believe that to put a major league uh, baseball park? Uh, no. Not in Rutherford County, I don't. Williamson County, I can buy. Why? Because there's less traffic out there than than there is. An I-24 is... An, is, is <sighs> Is rough stuff. Is it? <laughs> yes. I-24 is rough stuff. Um, and you've already got a very large uh, community of people out there, very close to the interstate, which is going to make it impossible to make it any better anytime soon. So the drive from here to Murfreesboro is problematic, where the drive from here to Spring Hill, for instance, is a lot more pleasant than the drive from here to Murfreesboro. Um, so... With that in mind, I can see there being a lot more space and better infrastructure to put a ballpark in Williamson County, say in the Cool Springs area, than I could, you know, putting a ballpark anywhere in Rutherford County. But do you really believe that would happen? Sure. Why? why? I mean, okay. Because you're, you're looking at this as in, why would you give up the Golden Goose that is downtown Nashville where everything is? It, but it is the Golden Goose. Gotcha. Cool. What I'm looking at is creating a separate, entirely different experience away from downtown, which, believe it or not, Darren, there are tons of people in this market craving not to have to go downtown to do something. Bro, I get it. So if you tell me me. that I don't have to go downtown. But is that a good business model? It can be if you build the right thing and you can draw a lot of that money out there to you or draw from the existing pool of people that's already out there. Which you know, you and I both know in Williamson County, especially, they've got a little bit more money out there than the rest of us do. Now they've got a you know, you know, less lower income section like everybody does. But Brentwood, Franklin, Spring Hill, Thompson Station, Columbia, all that out there in Murray County, which by the way continues to boom and grow all the time. Could that? Could you get people just from those communities? You don't have to have to draw from Metro Nashville. Can you just get 20,000, 15,000, 20,000 people a night from those communities to come out and support your ball team if you put together a good enough package for them to come out there and do so? The answer to that question is yes, because there's already a population out there with enough disposable income who are not coming all the way in here to Nashville to do that same thing. Well, so, yes. Look, I am absolutely in favor of that. But I also know when you say the Golden Goose, like you just, it's not a flippant comment. No. Like downtown Nashville is one of the best scenes in the country. Darren, it literally 
funds the state of Tennessee. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> literally. So you're talking it is about literally 37% of the budget of the state of Tennessee. That would be here 81 times a year and not having it in something that you just said in the area that funds the entire state. Well, at least a third of the budget for the whole state, a little bit more than that. And you want to move it out and again. No, you're not I'm, moving it. I'm for it's that. It's not here to begin with. So we're not talking about moving the Titans. The Titans are already here and established. They're going to be here. You're talking about bringing in new income, something that's not here. So we're not moving something. We're establishing something new. So, you know, that's the, those are two different ball games here. So if we were moving the Titans, yeah, moving the Titans out to Williamson County, no, no you're not going to do that. But establishing a brand-new ballpark out there with something, a brand-new culture and a brand-new neighborhood and calling them the Music City something or another, yeah, you can do that because, you know, that's, you know, you don't have to call them the Franklin whatever it is. You don't have to call them the Williamson County this, that. You call them the Music City something because no, it's gonna regional. No, they're going to be Nashville. I mean, the one, if it's this group, no, no, they're going to no, call it the Nashville no, you Stars. Can't do, no, you can't do that. Now, if you do it in Williamson County, you can't call them the Nashville or nothing. You can't do that. Um, I mean, you can, but it, 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 just, can't it looks weird. It, it feels weird. They, they're not going to do that. The Atlanta Braves did it. Well, they also changed the zip code a little bit to incorporate Atlanta into the place they were. Did they? they were oh, yes, they did. Their, they were new all, facil- their new area? If you look it up now, Truist Park, I believe, has got an Atlanta zip code. Oh, really? It. Yeah. Okay. But they were close enough to the city where they could do that. If you go out to Williamson County, it's not going to be close enough to the city unless you build it in Brentwood. Is it really any further than... Than the, their current setup in Atlanta? Yeah. The downtown? No, not downtown. Stop thinking about da- downtown. Come on, Darren. You've been here. Downtown is is Nashville, but it's not all of Nashville. You can go out here to I-65 and Harding Place. That's Nashville, too, but it's not downtown. So, yeah, you don't have to be, you know, within the city limit. It, that, that's, that's all we're talking about here. So in order for them to call themselves the Nashville something or another— it would help if you were in Nashville. Now, is there a precedence for that? Yes, absolutely. The Cleveland Cavaliers didn't always play in Cleveland. The Detroit Pistons didn't always play in Detroit. So, yeah, sure, you can do that. But, obviously, I think they would want to have a Nashville zip code uh, if they're going to call themselves the Nashville whatever. But that thinking has also gone away. Like that model, that model is yeah. not what people are doing. They've done just the opposite. Now True. everybody's come running back to downtown true but you, you, listen i've never been to cleveland you have is and i've never been to the lovely uh community of richfield uh out there where the richfield coliseum is is richfield ohio uh equivalent to franklin or brentwood tennessee as in as in population and oh, no. in the economy oh no, no oh it's no. not it was in the middle of nowhere oh i see so no so they did it because <laughs> it was cheap land yeah oh, okay yeah. yeah so they're not doing this because it's cheap land they're doing it to try to entrap and take advantage of the economic situation that is already out there so th- that's why you would do it you would do it because you know there is already money out there in that direction and that money, those families, all those people, they do not necessarily want to drive all the way back into town to do something. They would prefer staying out there. A lot of them would. And we hear it all the time. Well, I really don't come downtown no more. I like to just stay where I'm at. Yes. So where would that include? You don't think Tony in Nolensville, who Tony's probably listening now, you don't think Tony would prefer, and I'm guessing Tony and Tony will call us, and trust me, Tony will tell us. I'm guessing, knowing Tony here over the last couple of little, little bit, that Tony would prefer driving out there to uh, Cool Springs. Let's just call it Cool Springs for lack of a better term. Would prefer driving out to Cool Springs than he would driving into to, to Nashville, driving to the campus of Tennessee State, where they talked about putting this thing. I, I think Tony would prefer going out there. Not to say that there's anything wrong with either one of those sites. I'm just saying that you're talking two very different things here. Very different things. One more thing to shed on this. There's a lot of uh, teams that name themselves after states, and we've got one right here in Nashville. By the way, we just talked about Kansas City, and they're doing exactly what we're talking about. They're out in the middle of nowhere. They are. And they're moving the but Royals again, to Darren, downtown. Where, you've been out there at that stadium. I have. Where is that stadium? Middle of nowhere. Okay. So you think they, 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 again, they built that because it's cheap land, not because there was a wonderful neighborhood that they were moving into. No, that's not what – if you go to Williamson County, you're going to Williamson County to take advantage of the neighborhood that's already there in addition to 
Nashville and drawing people out of that. And you know, when they when the game comes on, they're still going to show the skyline of Nashville. They're still going to go here from Music City, USA, Nashville. It's time for Nashville whatever baseball. They're still going to do that. Or Music City Stars baseball. They're still going to do that. It's just not going to be in Nashville. It's just going to be out there. And I still believe it's going to be Williamson County all day versus Rutherford County. Rutherford County, you know, listen, I-24 is a bear. <sighs> and I, I don't know. I mean, you could try. There's plenty of land out there. and but But they've got the same situation, Darren, out there. If you put a stadium in the right place between Murfreesboro, Smyrna, Laverne, Christiana, heck, Manchester, mm -hmm. Shelbyville. You don't need anybody from Nashville to come to those games in order to make that situation work. You've got a, more than we enough people. we got over 300,000 people you out there. You've got more than enough people out there yeah. to make that situation work with a Major League Baseball team out there. In and a, with 840 connecting and with 840, Williamson County. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You're Fine. Now there's now there's an intriguing idea, which you just said, which no place in Nashville has got more room with the interstate connected to it than 840 does. It's got miles and miles of miles and miles of room right off of it. And it would be nothing to drop an exit off of one of those miles out there on 840 and put a ballpark out there. Now, could could you make it work? Can you make it close enough to Murfreesboro and close enough to Franklin to make the t maybe? Maybe, and may, I'm sure this is part of what they looked at, but I don't think the thought of building something here in Nashville or not building something here in Nashville is all that foreign at all. I, I really don't. Hmm. When you think about all those things I just put in place here, this is not, you've got Nashville, Darren, it's not that big of a city. It's no, not. No, I understand. I understand. It's, we're a regional city. I'm yeah. in the television business. We got 1.1 million people here. We only got about 700,000 people in Nashville. The other 500,000 people are scattered among us in all these other communities. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. 615-844-5600 is how you get in touch with us. More of the McFarland Show here on WNSR. With 13 locations nationally, including Smyrna, Star Leasing Company is a semi-trailer one-stop shop and the perfect place to build a career as a semi-trailer mechanic. Seeking candidates with all levels of experience, Star Leasing Company has a semi-trailer technician trainee program with sign-on and quarterly bonuses and other opportunities such as $1,000 for having a yearly physical. The package also includes 401k with company match, health, dental, and vision insurance, competitive pay with weekly paychecks, and paid holidays and time off. Star Leasing Company, not your typical semi-trailer leasing company it's starleasing.com to learn more prescriptions require an online consultation with a health care provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply see website for details and important safety information subscription required price varies based on product and subscription plan hey guys did you know there's a generic form of viagra that works just the same but is 95 percent cheaper and you can get it online just go to hymns.com slash joy through hymns you'll get a free medical consultation discreet shipping if prescribed a 100 percent online process and trusted generic alternatives to the name brands at up to 95% off. That's right, get generic for Viagra, the same active ingredient as brand name Viagra, but for 95% less. It's the same medication, still prescribed by a licensed medical provider, but with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face to face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, CEO and founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. Timeshare is the only thing that you can buy that you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. When you buy a timeshare, you give them a blank check to fill out any amount they want for annual maintenance and assessment fees. The crazy thing is, this never ends. Even when you die, your family's now going to be stuck with this burden. Stop the insanity today. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. 800-462-3333. In a single moment, everything can change. When a player's sudden cardiac event brought a national football game to a halt, it shone a spotlight on the importance of CPR readiness. Now, 
With youth sports in full swing, the American Heart Association is rallying parents and coaches to be ready in an emergency. To be ready, learn hands-only CPR. It's a skill anyone can learn in minutes. Visit heart.org slash hands-only CPR and become a lifesaver today. It's a Bill King show. Like I've mentioned, I thought Nick had a good five years still left in it. This one comes as a complete shock to me. If I sat here and said, I had a feeling, guys, Nick was trending, I'd be lying. I'd just be, that'd be the host trying to act like he knew something he didn't know. Why would I present that to you? I am shocked. I was taken aback by it. Weekday mornings beginning at 6 on Sports Radio 560 on 95.9 FM. Give us a call, 615-844-5600. The McFarland Show with Darren and Justin. Woo! We've been covering some ground today mm-hmm. here on the show. It's been a fun show. Hope everybody's having a great day. 615-844-5600. Darren and Justin here live in the Strike and Spare Family Fun Center studio. Let's go out to Donaldson. Robert is up next. Robert, what's up? How are you guys doing today? Great. Doing How fine, are you, Robert? Man, I enjoy listening to, to you guys. Uh, I, I watch uh, Justin sometimes in the morning, and I've been listening to you, Darren, for years. But I want to correct something okay. that Justin just yes, sir. said about the Nashville Metro. You mentioned that the Metro has 1.1 million people. Justin, you just killed a million and a you just killed 1.1 million people in Nashville, my my friend. <laughs> the metro is 2.2 million. It was 1.1 mm, in 1987. Okay. Mm, all right, we can you know, we can look. I understand. I, I understand. Love you. You I love you, my man, but I don't want you to. I don't want you to carry that <laughs> rap, man. Being a mass murderer. <laughs> Yo, I don't want to either. Trust me. Hey, that'll get him life in prison. They make people do that serious people. time. <laughs> they do That's serious right. time in the state for no that. Chance no chance for parole. I'm good on that. that. That's right. That's right. You guys take care, man. Enjoy. It. All right. Thank you, Robert. All right, bye. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, you know. Listen, the 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 population uh, here in in Nashville, where, wherever uh, you know, however you slice it, okay, and whatever the number is, the number is is arguable, I suppose, depending on how how you measure it, what you're doing. I know this: the there is a good chunk of people that live here in Metro Nashville. That's where well, the majority the of the last people live. That came out 2020. Okay. Um, was the would have been the last census um, where you can you know kind of look at it there, but okay. And but I don't want to get away from the point. The point is that there is more than enough people. We are not Chicago. We are not you know L A. We are not well L A. is a, actually a little little bit like us actually, where the population is very spread out very over spread out. over a yep. large area here. Mm-hmm. So it's not like where if it's not here, then it's nowhere. Phoenix spread out. Very, very spread out. Very spread out. Got a lot of people, mm-hmm. a lot of booming, not just neighborhoods, Houston. booming cities. Very spread out. Small Dallas. cities. All the Dallas. Oh, Dallas is a huge, you know, big, they call it the Metroplex. Big area. A lot of really big, small cities Miami. within them. Spread so, out. Yep. You know, we, we you don't have to have the But all those here. cities are way bigger than Nashville. Right now, they are. Yes. I mean, Nashville is growing, mm-hmm. you know, in, in that direct. But, yes, the Dallas Cowboys are a prime example. They are not in Dallas. They and they haven't played in Dallas in forever. They play in Arlington. Mm-hmm. Uh, the old Texas Stadium was in Arlington. The new AT&T Jerry World is in Arlington. They haven't played in Dallas in forever. Um, so, and they haven't needed to. They, but is that under the same? Because you seem to get pretty technical about the the name so is that zip code well, that's not Arlington's not Dallas's no, zip code no it's not but the team was already called the Dallas Cowboys when they got there so you know they didn't move to Arlington and then call themselves the Dallas now, Cowboys what's they were called the Dallas Cowboys before is the team next door yes. if you have if you're not familiar with that area is yeah. the Texas Rangers that is correct right next door yes yes They're that the is correct Texas Rangers that is correct now Teams named after states. Here's the secret, everybody. Teams named after states are named after states really for 1.5 reasons. The biggest reason is a lot of times to get their ballpark built, they wanted state funding. Mm -hmm. So to get state funding, it would behoove you to make it feel like that your team is 
part of the entire state and not just for you. But you'd have to admit it is weird because you have the Houston Astros. Yes. Houston. Yes. Not the Texas Astros. Yes. And then you have the Texas Rangers in Dallas. Well. Usually, I would think if you did the state thing, right, it's because, like here, the Tennessee Titans, because they're the only NFL team in the state. Well, you know, yeah. I would think you would do the state name, like you said, for but the that's, funding, that's not the... but you're also doing it because you're trying to incorporate everybody, the whole state, like it's our team. Yeah. But that's weird because the Rangers are not the state of Texas's team because there's another team in Texas that's a major league baseball I think, team. I think some of that has to do with who got there first. And I'm not enough of a baseball historian to tell you who was there, the, the Rangers or the, or the, or the Astros and which one is older. Um, because it is interesting. Remember, the Florida Marlins were always the Florida Marlins. Yes. Now they're the Miami Marlins. Yeah, why did they change? I don't know. Well, well they built a new ballpark. They built, so they is built, that why? That's why, because they okay. built a new ballpark, yeah. and they didn't need the, the state of Florida. And I've been there, by the way. It's super nice, but again, out in the middle, no, it's away from everything. It's out in not a great area well, at all. Well, they had funding problems on funding problems, and they, they had all kinds of things. I, I'm just saying, the Phoenix Cardinals changed to the Arizona Cardinals. Mm-hmm. You know, well, why did that happen? Well, you know, they need to stay funding in order to get that stadium done in Glendale. Um, the Minnesota Vikings are another one. The Minnesota Timberwolves. You know, why, why is all their stuff named after the state? Well, they're in a state capital area, which, you know, state lawmakers, and they want to make everybody feel inclusive. So we haven't had a Minneapolis team, mm-hmm. you know, and since the Minneapolis Lakers. Well, really. a lot of them play in St. Paul. Yes. But which they're is, all Minnesota teams. Yes. You Saint, notice that? St. Paul is the capital of the state of Minnesota. But you got Minnesota Vikings, yes. Minnesota Twins, Minnesota yes. Timberwolves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they, no, they stick with the state theme. Yes, because they, they're not all in Minneapolis. But they would get state, they get state funding. Minnesota for that Wild, yeah, the Minnesota Wild. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, I'm telling you, it, the funding game is a big part of this. Mm-hmm. It, it really is, and that includes with the Titans. The Titans, the state of Tennessee paid a pretty penny to get the current Nissan Stadium built, and the state of Tennessee is contributing $500 million of the $2.2 billion to get the new stadium built. So, you know, you need to kind of, oh, you want you want the Tennessee Titans? Done. Instead of the Nashville whatever it is, you know, which, I, which probably would have changed the name of the team. I don't think it would have been the Nashville Titans. It probably been something else. So do you believe this this – they're going to actually come out in four months with a, a a site. Do you believe that? Well, with a list, with a wish well, no, list. No, no, no. There's already a, but no, I, they, I they, thought they, they said. They said a wish list. These are the sites that we've looked at and studied. No, I know, but they said that the report should be done in four months. So yeah. The best place, did it not? Well, it said the, the places that they've studied oh. and the best places. So they're not going to the, narrow down and no. say, this is where we want to. Listen. This is where we're going to be. Do you know what it would take in order to get that? They would need to talk with those local lawmakers in those particular places about what it would take to build a, a stadium. And I haven't heard those discussions started at all. And, you know, they can't. And first of all, they would have to have an expansion team there. We're, we're way early. By the way, we're Adam way Hill early. in Las Vegas yesterday told us they're building a new arena for an NBA team that doesn't even exist. Well, we're no stranger <laughs> to that. That's how that's how the Predators I know, got here. I know. They built the stadium and nobody was here yet. Yep. All right. We'll take our final break. Come back. Put a bow on Wednesday's show. We'll do that next here on WNSR. <clears throat> oh, beautiful gold rush with your sparkling top prize. You surely are a sight for sore eyes. And jackpot slots with your chance of $75,000 winners. Oh, how I'd take you for a candlelight dinner. Uh, sounds like people are really loving the new February Instant Games from the Tennessee Lottery. Play today for your chance to win up to $5 million, only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing fun. Please play responsibly. We all make resolutions this time of year, and let's face it, most of them won't stick. But here's one that's not only easy to keep, but will help you feel healthier all year long. Navage. Navage provides quick, drug-free nasal relief by washing saline in one nostril, around the back of the nose, and out of the other nostril. This time of year, when everyone is sick, Navage helps by sucking out germs, bacteria, and viruses trapped in our noses that cause us to feel miserable. And come allergy season, it does the same with dust, pollen, and other allergens. And unlike medications that can take time to help, if they're effective at all, Navage helps treat congestion symptoms in seconds flat, without drugs. 
This New Year's resolve to use drug-free Navage to help you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier all year long. Ask for Navage at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Target, or find us online at Navage.com. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Clean nose, healthy life. Gas, groceries, utilities, you name it. The price of everything is going up. And if you're stuck in a bad timeshare with rising maintenance fees, the financial burden can be crushing. It is time to get your finances in order and get the real facts about that timeshare that you are stuck in and your options to get rid of it. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has been helping families out of horrible timeshares for over 10 years and has put together a complete timeshare exit information kit that he will send you absolutely free. To date, over 30,000 families have trusted Wesley Financial Group to help them out of financial hardship by getting them out of bad timeshares. Get the facts about how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Simply call Wesley now for your free timeshare exit kit and see how you can become timeshare free. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. Once again, 800-462-3333. Do you ever feel like gambling is causing financial strain or hurting your relationships? The Gambling Clinic has been helping people who want to change their gambling habits for over two decades. With physical clinics and remote online appointments, we're here to help you make informed decisions about your gambling so it doesn't lead to a bigger problem. Visit us at thegamblingclinic.com so we can work together to help you win your life back. This project is funded by the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. It's the McFarlane Show with Darren McFarlane and Fox 17's Justin McFarlane. Maybe it's an overreaction on Monday, but I'm going to move it forward for me. Pump the brakes a little bit on Kyle Shanahan. He's got to do it to be included as he's one of the best coaches in the NFL. No, right now, I would say Andy Reid is one of the best coaches in the NFL, and he's one of the best coaches of all time. The McFarlane Show with Darren and Justin on Nashville Sports Radio. Give us a call, 615-844-5600. The McFarlane Show with Darren and Justin. Tony has responded on our text line. Okay, Tony. Tony and Nolansville. I retired in 2019. My office was in Bridgestone Arena. I have only been back to downtown area two times since I retired, both times for a luncheon only. I did not attend downtown Nashville. I, I, I do. I, I'm sorry. I do not attend. And do not in capital letters. Yeah. Why did I say I did? I do not. So his answer is yes. He would like, actually, he would like the MLB team to consider Nolansville. I think he would. Yeah. Which under the, if they could get their infrastructure together, they might. But Nolansville not. is Beautiful, but you could not. The, the infrastructure. The infrastructure doesn't work. No, no, no. It and is, it is wonderful. Don't get me twisted. No, I, I like no so, You no, could not navigate. The infrastructure no, doesn't. No. It's, it's not made for that Trust kind of me, commute. I'm no. in that area no. all the time. You could not navigate. No, no. Is it, there space out there? Yes, sure. yes, sure. But, in fact, uh, Marty Erat has got uh, a lot of land out in that area. Well, there's a lot of land to have out there. Lots, but um, it is not uh, equipped for a 35,000, 37,000-seat yeah. stadium. Yeah. Well, yes, it is. You can build a stadium. What you can't get is those people in and out of the said stadium Well, that's what I meant. I yeah. mean, you can't navigate that. Yes. You can build it. Sure. You just can't navigate the people in and it, out of it. It would be a nightmare getting those people in and out of there. Do you ever go to the Pontiac Silverdome? No. Oh. No. I've oh, heard, though. Le- and- leaving that place, you know, getting in was, you know, depending on, because, you know, everybody comes in different ways, yeah. right? Some yeah. people are there five hours early, yeah. four hours early, three. So people are coming in in waves, right? Yeah. But when 80,000 are leaving at the same time. People say the same thing about oh, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Yeah, I've, there's a I've one been there. Lane, there's a one-lane yes. highway that gets out there, and they say it's a nightmare getting in and out of there. It is, because I've been there. So It's a nightmare. You need to build somewhere with infrastructure, which I-65 counts. <laughs> 840 counts. Yes, it does. That helps. Yes. They don't have that going no. right in the middle of Nolan's home. No. All right, that's going to do it for our show today. Good stuff. Good job, Adam Johnson, filling in. 
Management in the building. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Bill Keen will get things started at 6 a.m. JB and the General, 9 to 11. We'll see you at 2.